Welcome back to the Thermo Diet Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Miller, and I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Tyler Woodward. How are we doing today, Jaden? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Today, we've got a Q&A from the Thermo Diet group and also the Thermo Diet Instagram. So let's dive in. First question, what do you think of sulfur-based MSM supplements? MSM. I want to say... I don't really have an opinion. I think that messing with that pathway inside of the cell can be a slippery slope in some cases. Um, it's one of the reasons that like NAD therapy is not necessarily uh, looked upon favorably. Yeah, favorably in the bioenergetic sphere is because you kind of throw that whole um, balance of chemicals out of whack in the mm -hmm. cell whenever you start supplementing with things like that. Um, so. Really, you can just supplement with like some B3 and get the same effect, really. Mm -hmm. Well, MSM is like a detox agent. Yeah, it kind of affects that pathway a little bit, if gotcha. I'm not mistaken. I don't know much about MSM. I've seen some people love it, some people hate it. And I feel like you should just always exercise caution with those detox agents, mm -hmm. the chelators. Yeah, I could be thinking of a completely different supplement, but I'm pretty sure MSM is um, one of those that is not really favorable in terms of bioenergetics. Yeah, um, I think it is. It's kind of dangerous too. I'm pretty sure that it's, uh, it, it can be, uh, explosive whenever it comes into contact with certain like gases. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd just be careful. <laughs> so don't, uh, no vegetables when you take MSM, don't get gassy. But, uh, <laughs> I think getting some sulfur based amino acids like taurine, what are the other sulfur based amino acids? I couldn't tell you, honestly. There's a couple sulfur based amino acids that are really important for liver detoxification because your liver needs sulfur to detoxify. I think taurine is one of them. Um, there's a couple, uh, cysteine might be one of them as well. Um, but those are all just important to have enough of in your diet. What, not a huge proponent for MSM, but I honestly don't know enough to tell you otherwise. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I don't know, it's just one of those things where it's like, there's not really any reason to supplement with it that I can think of. Mm -hmm. There's probably a very specific reason to supplement with it mm -hmm. that we aren't aware of. Yeah, I mean, a situation where it's like you need this would work perfectly. I don't know. I still think that it, there could be a simpler solution to something that you might use it for. Yeah, for sure. Or everything that I've heard it be used for anyways. Question number two. How do you go about the research process and learning process? Any tips? You want to start this one out? Yeah, I mean, I think the answer is just to always keep reading. And what is probably the most important thing is to look at people that have conflicting views and it's easy to not do that. It's easy to get sucked into the black hole of going over the same information over and over again, just reading Ray Pete and people that base their work off Ray Pete. Um, you need to find people that disagree with you and going down that rabbit hole as well. And f the best way to make strengthen your argument is to find the holes in it, right? Mm -hmm. Getting information from a variety of sources, whether it's a podcast, it's a book, reading research articles, anything is going to be very important in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I kind of come of it, come at it from two different perspectives. One would be, um, you got to find stuff that you're interested in, uh, to help fight the friction that you're going to have whenever you're learning stuff, whether it's a different author that speaks to you a little bit better about the same subject or, um, just finding a subject that you're really passionate about to learn about. Um, if it's something that's work related and it's not something that you're super interested in, um, you might rethink that the, your career path, number one. <laughs> um, but if it's something that you have to learn, just really set up a system that is going to allow you to be very uh, diligent about learning everything that you need from the foundational levels into um, the complexities of it. So uh, be very obsessive, kind of learn everything that you can about it and in the general sense and get a good foundation mm -hmm. for like that whole area generally. Uh, and then whenever you find a specific area within the general realm, um, you can dive deep in that specific area and get very good at that one thing. Yeah. I think well, two things. I think you, as you said, starting with the principle based approach, like bottom up, you want to find the underlying principles that connect everything and that will help you because you're never going to be able to remember like specific things. Like I used to know at some point what MSM stood for, as we were just talking about, I figured it out, mm -hmm. but you know, the principles of what you're trying to accomplish, you know, what you're trying to do. And then you can formulate your whole concept around that. 
mm-hmm. which is what bioenergetics, what Ray Pete's all about. It's going through that bioenergetic lens, as they call it. Yeah, definitely. I also think um, learning how to ask good questions and think critically is going to be important for anything that you do. Um, especially whenever you're learning something, whenever you can think of what questions to ask, then you're able to Mm. learn about the subject. Um, So being able to develop a good set of questions that you approach to any situation that you're learning about uh, can be a very good method for learning quickly. I also think like swallowing your ego is a big one. You just gotta, you're gonna be wrong more often than not probably, (laughs) at least for a while. And then also, I think what's really important is underrated is like the whole concept of being a mixed athlete where it's like, you don't just tie yourself into one specialty. Like for me, looking at things through different lenses, uh, recently I've been looking at the teeth a lot and I kind of like have made breakthroughs that there that have come back to reflect my views other where like things like that, like doing jujitsu will sometimes make you have a breakthrough for, you know, science somehow. Like you can make certain connections because you see things in a different light. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And also using different um, methods of absorbing the information too, like from podcasts to reading or listening to a book, um, maybe writing about the subject yourself Mm -hmm. to get a good feel for what it is like to um, create information for that area. Uh, Talking about it with other people is going to be good. Definitely finding a community that you can um, have people in that are going to allow you to ask questions Mm -hmm. and learn from them. That's invaluable. Like a a mentor is very, very valuable in my opinion. And so I would definitely um, get involved in some kind of community and find somebody that you can ask questions. For sure. It's probably easily the most accelerated accelerated way to learn. Yeah. Whether it's Ray Pete, Georgie, or Jaden, listen to all the Thermodia podcasts when I was getting into this, Jake Miner, all that stuff will significantly help accelerate your growth. And then you can, you, I mean, it's not a bad idea to dive into something like really hard. And then you can come back, like take a step back and branch off. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely get your base layer down. Yeah, definitely. And um, if you have the time during that period, then if you want to kind of dive into the more complex areas of that field mm-hmm. and then um, have an idea of what the complexities are and then go back and establish your foundation, um, you'll be able to connect a lot of the principle based stuff on the foundational level to the more complex stuff that you've, um, kind of like not familiarized yourself with, but you will be able to recognize it and connect it back to that Mm -hmm. higher idea. Yeah. One of the things that I think has really helped accelerate my growth is just my obviously degree, my background in science. I took four semesters of chemistry, a couple semesters of biology and physics. And when you see all the, like, I don't necessarily, like I could not pass an organic chemistry test right now with no shot, but having the underlying principles and understanding like what's there. And so what I'm saying is buy a textbook. If you really want to get into it, buying textbooks will really help you, especially maybe like the dummy, like the organic chemistry for dummies, like finding those principles that in a simplified way will really help you to escalate your learning. Any herbs for boosting testosterone? Ashwagandha. Yeah. <laughs> That's your first go-to? Yeah, that would probably be my only go-to, really, um, whenever it comes to herbs. What about false? I guess phosphatidylserine is not an herb. Mm -hmm. Um, Makuna, mucuna. Mucuna? Potentially. More as an indirect effect, I feel like. Is that an herb, though? Oh, no. Well, yeah, it is. It is. Because it's from mucuna periens Mm -hmm. from the... It's from a a plant. Okay. I could have sworn it was a seed extract. Is an herb, what's an herb than a leaf extract? Yeah, I think so. All right, then it might not be an herb. Yeah, I consider herbs like like the leaf part. Mm. Well, I think you could potentially look at like apigenin and some of the, which is like from parsley, mm-hmm. flavonoids and parsley. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. yeah ashw- parsley is one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ashwagandha has a, and there are also other herbs that have smaller amounts of apigenin, but parsley is just the biggest one. Mm-hmm. Um Ashwagandha, it is. Uh, there's a slight testosterone boosting effect of ashwagandha. Definitely wouldn't overdo it. Um, oh, what about like soleus for scoli? Yeah, for scolin. I was thinking about that as well. Um, it's not like a potent T booster, but I think it, it boosts- would it would have indirect effects that would lead to higher testosterone levels for sure. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that's like 
knock your socks off, boost your tea. Yeah. Other than a good ashwagandha supplement, there's really no other like herbs that are profound in my opinion. Um, I like theanine. Well, that's an amino acid. Yeah. Um, I know that Andrew Huberman likes, what was it? Tonka Ali Mm -hmm. and something else. He has uh, like, um, two supplements that he likes to stack together that he says work really good as testosterone boosters. Um, I tried the stack and I didn't really feel anything from it. I tried it for, I think two or three months Mm -hmm. and like, it wasn't anything different. I've tried ashwagandha though on its own, not through, not in Testro X specifically, but, um, I was mega dosing some ashwagandha for a little while and that stuff is great. It gives you some really weird dreams, but I really like ashwagandha. It's definitely an energizing herb for mm-hmm. sure. Maybe I'll mess around with that at some point. Haven't gotten around to that yet. I would like to try, um, I was actually, I don't know if I want to try it, but I saw something about microdosing mushrooms yesterday. This guy was all, like, all the rage about it. And I was just like, you were really angry for like, he was just really angry. He said, like, mushrooms. And I was like, all right, man, chill. <laughs> and they supposed to make you chill out. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, there's a lot of interesting studies coming around, coming out about the benefits of microdosing mushrooms on a consistent basis. Um, I would be more curious as to what the long-term effects are for yeah. doing something like that. Cause like, um, you might feel good during the 30 days that you're doing it, but then like what happens for the two months after that? And mm-hmm. then how are you a year from now or two years from now? Um, I think there's still a lot of research that needs to be done before we're confident in doing yeah. that. He said he's only doing it every other day. So he's never like relies on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the doses, the doses that they use are extremely small. Um, so you don't get any kind of, uh, psychedelic effect is more of just like very subtle enhancement that you don't really feel. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I still, I still think that, I mean, it technically it's a poison, right? So it's like, do you really want to be doing that on a consistent basis over a long period of time? But hormesis, um, yeah, probably not. They were doing like 250 milligrams. Okay. But yeah, it, it's also just like, it's one of those things where it's dangerous because it's like, there's no, you don't go to your doctor and say like, take this much. Like it's just some guy, some guy on TikTok was like, yeah, I do this. <laughs> like, oh, I'll try that. There's no science to it. It's just, I mean, not really. Yeah. I mean, there are some people like Paul Stamets. He has some really like scientifically sound um, protocols for microdosing oh, and um, like lemon teching and stuff like that. But I am still skeptical of mm-hmm. doing it on a long, like for a long amount of time. He's an interesting dude. I love Paul Stamets. Yeah. Paul Stamets is, uh, he seems fun. Yeah. Mucuna Puriens for focus with coffee. I haven't done Mucuna in quite a while. Um, I used to like it a whole lot. And then I stopped really getting any kind of benefit from it. Um, So I've just not taken it for a while. So I would definitely do like uh, micro cycles of it. So maybe like five on, two off to kind of um, keep yourself from building a tolerance to it over time. I'd agree with that. I like it a lot though. I think it's good for focus. It just very smooths your energy. You feel very uh, in the zone, I would say. You're at least easier to get in the zone. Also great pre-workout. Hmm. Um, just helps same thing like maybe muscle contraction that dopaminergic response feels good Um, not much else to say about it but I think it's beneficial yeah I would say that um, you're probably going to feel a benefit if you're low in dopamine but outside of that the benefit or your the ability to feel the benefits of it is going to be rather subtle Um, you might slowly feel you you probably wouldn't feel a difference until you didn't have it. And then you're like, Oh, I can definitely tell I don't have my Macuna today. Yeah. Um, a lot it's of people probably not a place you want to get to. Yeah. A lot of people say that about Cortigon too. Like, you know, they definitely have an edge whenever mm-hmm. they have their Cortigon and then whenever they don't take it, they can tell that they're just not quite yeah. up to where they'd like to be. That's why I'd love to get one of those like B1, B2, B3 supplements. That'd be cool. Severe hand ex- eczema, already eating thermo, supplementing with D, E, and K, magnesium, turmeric, and eating liver. Any advice? Personally, I would not look at your diet. I mean, if you've already dialed in your diet, I would be looking at your clothes, what you're putting on your clothes, 
washing your clothes. Like some people will get really bad reactions from detergent, your soap, um, shampoo, uh, things that you're putting on your skin could be really da not da maybe damaging it, but causing that immune response. Yeah. I'd also be curious as to uh, where your thyroid levels are at as well. Um, cause that might be, it might be a result of a low metabolic state, which in that case is just going to take time to overcome. But maybe you just get some good quality lotion, like get some tallow that could help potentially get some vitamins. I mean, if you're already doing the liver. Um, oh, sorry. I get a Benadryl, dad free Benadryl. I don't know how correlated eczema is to the histamine response, but I would guess it is pretty correlated. So for whatever reason, maybe you have elevated histamine. Oh, also, I don't know, this is the next question. Um, but the dye free Benadryl is a potent antihistamine. You can also look at tea, theanine mm -hmm. or even tea. A lot of teas contain theanine. That's where it's from, which is also a potent antihistamine. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nope. Nothing I can think of. I also might try cutting out the turmeric. See how that affects you. Oh yeah, definitely. If it's like an herb or something in your supplement stack, probably try and take that out and just leave like the fat soluble vitamins and minerals that you're taking. Um, and then slowly add those back in. Uh, over time because it might it could definitely be something like that as well yeah been trying to get away from Tylenol but can't with severe menstrual cramps any tips Tylenol for menstrual cramps is what they've been using mm -hmm. hmm. first and foremost throw out your Tylenol and just get aspirin yeah 100% um, let's see red light and uh, like a heating pad uh, those are both pretty good some magnesium is going to be important mm -hmm. that's going to help um, kind of relieve the rigidness of the muscles. Um, and if you're not on birth control and you're still having hard menstrual cramps, um, putting some progesterone over it, just rubbing some progesterone on like a good uh, progesterone cream, like Ona's Naturals is a really good one. Uh, just rubbing that on there can help alleviate mm -hmm. that as well. I'd look into the carrot cure. If you're not doing that, the daily carrot salad or just eating carrot, uh, you can put Vinegar on it, that will help detoxify the estrogen a little bit. Definitely getting some magnesium on um, that can is very potent for cramps. Um, milk is a great source of a little bit of magnesium, potassium, which potassium is also going to be very important, and calcium, again. Um, the potassium in the fruit and fruit will help a lot. Just getting a lot of potassium is going to help stabilize your cells, so it's going to help them from cramping up in general. Um, the carrot will help with the detoxification of the estrogen in those pathways. And then I think that's about it. Yeah. That's all I can think of really. Yeah. Definitely would try magnesium. Yeah. Unfortunately we don't have the perspective of a woman on our podcast right now, which if we did, it might have some extra tips, yeah. but unfortunately we do not. Um, Harry growth. You've done, you've done a lot of been this. I would read Danny Rowdy's book. Hair like a fox. Hair like a fox. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's going to have some great tips. Really just doing the bioenergetic stuff. I mean, it really just comes down to metabolic rate. Yeah. What was your solution that you gave to that guy? Aaron Keyes was experimenting with a topical solution that we had come up with. Uh, with uh, caffeine, coconut oil, um, aspirin. And honey, no, I, I think it was in coconut oil, um, maybe vitamin E. Mm. I can't remember exactly. It was a long time ago that I gave him that, but it was something along those lines. And, um, I think it worked pretty well. I mean, he said that it, it helped him a little bit whenever he was regrowing his hair. I would definitely look into vitamin E for sure. Might look into donating blood. Mm -hmm. um, anything that's going to block oxidative phosphorylation, glucose metabolism, which is the same thing. Um, it's going to be inhibitory. So getting excess nitric oxide, any of that stuff. So eating a lot of fruits, getting sunlight, you can use red light therapy on your head or wherever you're balding. <laughs> um, vitamin K is going to be pretty important. The, um, George, you talked about in the last podcast, so you could use the saturated fat. I would probably use ghee, honestly, if you're going to, if it's for your hair, I feel like it's probably worth spending some couple extra dollars for ghee, but coconut oil is going to be a lot less expensive. Ghee will just have more vitamins in it um, to get, you can use it topically and that should help stimulate the hair regrowth as well. Mm -hmm. How to clear acne. Haven't we answered this question before? I feel like we've answered this on I'm sure one we, or two of the last 
Um, is that we did? I'm sure we just get it every time. Yeah. You probably go sauna, eat the carrot salad. Um, make sure you're not putting crap in your body. Yeah. Um, look at your micronutrient deficiencies. Could be a vitamin A deficiency, vitamin B5 deficiency, maybe a zinc deficiency also. Um, so if you can, definitely get a micronutrient test and alleviate those micronutrient deficiencies and you should be well on your way to getting rid of it. Yeah. And see if anything irritates your acne specifically, any foods that are, you can tie to it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It could be a gut issue as well too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in guys. And always, if you see us post a Q and A in the groups, make sure to throw your questions in there. We'll ask them, answer them for you. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.